Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and these are the all new 2022 M2 iPads Pro as Apple calls them or iPad Pro. We have the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch. They're not too different than last year's models, but I thought we'd unbox them, take a look at them and talk about what's different. Now they still come in space gray and silver. And the only way to tell the difference based on the boxes is the wallpaper here. With the 11 inch, if we flip this over, you'll see, I have the 256 gigabyte variant iPad pro 11 inch fourth generation with Wi-Fi. This still starts at 799 and goes up to 2099 with Wi-Fi and cellular. With the other model, we have the sixth generation 12.9 inch, and this is the one terabyte version. This goes from 1,099 up to 2,399 with Wi-Fi and cellular. This is the 2,099 version and comes with one terabyte, which means it has 16 gigabytes of Ram, same as the two terabyte model. So it's quite expensive, but this is the device I use full time. Now let's go ahead and open these up. We'll start with the 11 inch and I don't think I've actually owned an 11 inch before. So let's go ahead and open this up. You'll see open here. I don't think I've had this size iPad for quite some time as I actually prefer the 12.9 inch iPad pro. So we'll take the top of the box off and this one is actually space gray. So as we take this out here, you'll see there's the iPad. Let's see what comes in the box. Anything different than what we would expect. So nothing in there. We don't have matching stickers. We just have a quick start guide, of course, our warranty card and those stickers. So unfortunately they're not matching. Let's go ahead and put that away. And we have our adapter here, our AC wall adapter, and this is the 20 watt adapter. So it's included in the box. And then we also have just like the regular iPad this year, we have a braided cable. So a USB C to USB C braided cable. So that's really nice that they've included that. We'll put this back, put this away and let's take a closer look at the iPad. So we'll take the cover off here. There we go. And you can see the antenna for Wi-Fi there. And it's pretty much the same as before. But before we go around that, let's take a look at the other iPad as well. So let's take these tabs off again. Again, we'll do the same on the one above. There we go. Let's flip this back over. Now let's take the top of the box off. Let's see. It seems to be a little bit stuck here. There we go. And this one, like I said, I wouldn't expect anything different, but let's just look underneath. Same thing. You've got the braided cable and your 20 watt adapter. Let's put the top of the box back on here and let's take the wrapper off this iPad. Now this is a silver one. Last year I had space gray. And they're exactly the same as last year, as far as dimensions, the overall layout. So as we move these to the side here on the right side, we have our volume buttons. Of course, we have the charging area for the Apple pencil too. And then in the bottom right of the iPad pro 12.9, we have a little SIM card tray. On the bottom, we have our USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 port, 40 gigabytes a second, and you'll see the speakers on the side. We also have our millimeter wave antenna on the 12.9 inch since it's the cellular model. On the other side, there's not much, just a little microphone. And then on the left side or top, depending on its orientation, you'll see again, we have another 5G millimeter wave antenna area along with two microphones and then two speaker ports and then our power sleep wake button. So very similar. We've got very similar displays, the same thing we had last year, which means in the 11 inch, we still don't have mini led. We have a 2,388 by 1,668 resolution at 264 pixels per inch with 600 nits of max brightness. We have the mini led based display on the 12.9 inch with 2,732 by 2,048 at 264 pixels per inch, but goes up to 1600 nits peak brightness in HDR. Now we don't get any different cameras this year and the cameras on the back are the exact same. So we have the same wide and ultra 
wide with our LiDAR sensor. Now, before we set these up and take a look at the differences as far as using them, I wanted to share this hub that would be used for productivity that I think is great. And it's from our channel partner, Anchor, and Anchor has sponsored this video. For the ultimate multitasking hub for the new iPads and iPad OS 16, this is the new 551 USB-C hub. This is the first USB-C hub that's also foldable and designed for iPad to give you the best viewing angle and ergonomics for the best desktop iPad setup. It has eight ports total with two USB-A ports with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the back, we have an HDMI port capable of 4K at 60 Hertz, along with a power input. On the right hand side, we have a connection to the iPad along with a micro SD and SD card slot. If you're looking for hubs or docking stations for your iPads, Anchor's 551 USB-C hub should definitely meet your needs. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's go ahead and turn these on. Wait for them both to boot up here and let's get them set up. We'll also see how it compares as far as benchmarks and the magic keyboard and see how it fits. It shouldn't be any different. We'll wait for it to boot up here. They booted up at basically the same speed. Now I'll have to set these up and we'll go through setup on one and then I'll quickly set up the other one. So let me bring in the iPad Pro and set that up with this one. Now I'm setting it up from this iPad to this one. I need to input the passcode from this iPad to the new one. Now it's setting up my iPad. It says it will take a few minutes to activate. Now let's go ahead and set up Face ID. We'll hit continue and it's telling me how to set up Face ID. I'll take off my glasses for now. And they're just reading glasses. So I don't use them all the time. And then we'll hit continue and scan our face again. It says scan is complete. We'll go ahead and hit continue. Now we can transfer directly from the iPad or from iCloud. I actually find that iCloud is a little bit faster. So we'll go ahead and do that. We have to agree to the terms and conditions. It says setting up your Apple ID. So we'll give it just a moment here. Now it says, make this your new iPad. We'll hit continue. It says, keep your iPad up to date. Again, we'll hit continue. Now it wants to add my Apple card. Now it's asking me to use Siri. We'll go ahead and hit continue. And then we can choose to improve Siri and dictation. I don't want to share recordings. And now it's asking me to update the software as this wasn't pre-installed. So we need to update to iPad OS 16.1, which is the public version. So we'll go ahead and download and install and get that installed. We'll go ahead and hit agree. And this could take a few minutes. So we'll give it just a moment. Now the 12.9 inch iPad pro is still updating, but I finished setting up the 11 inch and I thought we'd take a look at the software that's pre-installed as there's probably going to be an update. So we'll go to settings general then about, and the pre-installed version is very similar to what we had with the regular iPad, iPad OS 16.0, 20A 8372 is the build number. So it looks like we need an update. Let's go back under software update. We have an update to iPad OS 16.1. Now let's go to wallpaper first and then I'll get that updated, but we'll go to choose a new wallpaper, go to stills, and we already have the new wallpaper for these devices. So you'll see here's the one that goes along with this. We also have this more purple one or purple blue as well. So we'll go ahead and set this. I'll get both of these updated, everything restored, and then we'll continue. iPad OS 16.1 is now installed on the new M2 iPad Pro 12.9. And then it asked me to reconnect the old iPad that I'm moving over from. So now it's actually restoring and it says it will take some time. It has to download this from iCloud. Now everything's been restored. It took about 45 minutes to transfer everything. Everything's up to date. I have the new wallpapers on here. And of course I'll link those in the description. So all of my apps that were on my other iPad from last year, the M1 are restored. Now I thought we'd compare these very quickly and then we'll take a look at overall performance and the other things that are new. Comparison wise, of course I have space gray for the M1, silver for the M2, but you can see they're basically identical in every way. So no real differences here, the overall look. And I thought we'd even take a look at the magnets since I have some magnet paper here. Let me flip it to this side. You'll see the magnets here as we go across should be identical because the magic keyboard for this device should work on the new device. There's no difference. You can buy the same exact magic keyboard. So if I grab the one I've been using for a year, 
It's the white one. It's well used. It's got some stains on it that I can't get off. Let's go ahead and just click it into place. It should work with the new one. So we'll flip it over here, should click into place and we're good to go. So if you needed to replace this for whatever reason, hopefully Apple keeps a similar form factor as far as being able to use this keyboard in the future, but it works right away. You'll see the cursors moving around. If I hit command space, we can go into our spotlight search and more. So everything's working as you would expect the iPad keyboard, the magic keyboards are compatible. And that's true with the 11 inch as well. Now I thought we'd just look at Geekbench as that's really going to be the only way we'll be able to tell a difference quickly. Video editing should be better on the new ones. DaVinci Resolve is coming to iPad Pro. I'm surprised we don't have a final cut, but let's go over to Geekbench 5. We'll see where that is here. Geekbench 5 and again, Geekbench 5. So you'll see it's loading on all the devices. You can see we have 15.3 gigabytes and we have Apple M1 on the old one and it says ARM at 3.49 gigahertz. So this is actually the new M2. It's just not updated in Geekbench to show it. But if we go to our CPU benchmarks, and this is not really a good way to measure differences, but it's a way to show you the differences. But again, let's run the, the benchmarks. We'll wait for that to complete and take a look. Benchmarks completed, and as you can see on the M2 devices on the left here, we have only 10 points difference between both scores. That's pretty rare, and only two points for multi-core. Typically on different devices, different processors, you'll see a slight difference, but this is incredibly close. So compared with the M1, we have 1,721 for single core versus 1,890. For the multi-core, 7,239 versus 8,491. It's just an easy way to see the difference. You aren't necessarily going to notice that difference in everyday use. However, one difference we have is with the cameras. And if we go into the camera settings, there's supposed to be ProRes video on the new M2 iPads. So if we go into settings and we go down to camera, I'm actually not seeing this and I'm curious if any of you are if I go into formats That's where it typically would be on the iPhone. I'm not seeing anything. So under record video I'm not seeing ProRes video now I wouldn't typically use this regularly, but it would be nice to have this there if I go into my camera You'll see go into video. There's nothing there for ProRes. I haven't been able to find it So there's something maybe they need to update the iPads again Someone forgot this but if you have it and I'm missing something let me know in the comments below now, one thing I wanted to mention that's new that Apple didn't mention is we have the power off sound for the iPad. We don't have the power on sound. I found this when turning off this device, the 11 inch, and I wasn't muted. So if I turn it off, we'll just push volume up, volume down, press and hold the power sleep wake button, slide to power off. We now have the power off sound. The odd thing is there's no menu item for it. So if we go into our accessibility settings, go down to audio slash visual, there's no menu item for it. I couldn't find it here anywhere. And I only have it on the iPhone, not the iPad. So it's something that maybe they left by mistake. Maybe they need to add the menu option here, but when you power off the device, it makes that sound now. So we'll turn this off and see if it does it and this one doesn't. I found it only happens on the one I set up as new, not the one I restored. So that's something I thought I'd point out. It doesn't actually happen when you power it on either, only when you power it off. So it's something that's a little bit surprising. Maybe it's something they left by mistake. Something I noticed when running benchmarks is the color temperature differences. The 11 inch, I have true tone off on both of them and the 11 inch is a little bit more yellow. I actually went in and checked for night shift because of this. So if we go into our display settings, you'll see everything is off on both of them. So the displays are set up the exact same. All of those are off true tone, something I don't typically use when I'm doing videos and things and I want to see real color temperatures. It's just a little bit different on both. So if we go back into photos, you'll see, I just imported this white wallpaper and that's the difference. So definitely a little more yellow on the non mini led display. So I just thought I'd share that. Now, one of the new features for Apple pencil is called hover. Hover allows you to see where the pencil is before you press it onto the screen. So if we connect it to the device, give it just a moment to connect. It will take a second since it's never been connected to this device. If we bring this in, you'll see here as we bring the Apple pencil, wait for it to connect. Let's try that again. See if it connects. Maybe I need to give it more time here. 
that should be it. There we go. As I bring this down, you don't really see a difference. Let's see if we see that in notes. And as I bring the cursor close to the screen, you can see here, let's switch to blue. You can see I'm hovering over the screen, over the display, and then I can set my pencil down. And so that's something we've had with many other different pencils on different devices, but they've brought to this device. Also, You'll see as I bring it close to apps, I notice they get larger. So as I bring the pencil close to the app store, it increases in size. So you can see where you're actually going to press on the display. Something I noticed as I'm moving it around. And this is on both displays as well. So if we connect it to the 11 inch, give it just a moment to connect here. It's going to take a second. I don't know why that didn't pop up on the other iPad, but maybe because I restored it. We'll just continue and there we go. So it should be connected and we're connected. We should have the same interaction. So as we get close to an app, it sort of increases in size, bringing it sort of into our touch area. So you can see there it expands and just gives us an idea where we're going to actually press on the display. So that's something that should be great for artists. It's just a new feature and I believe there's settings for it. So if we go to Apple Pencil, you'll see that we have Scribble. You'll see we have Pencil Hover, show effects when using Apple Pencil, allow double tap only with Pencil Hover. So that's another option as well. So if we turn that on, it says double tap on the side of the Apple Pencil will only work while in hover range. So that's something you can select as well. So that's available if you wanna use it, something kind of different. I think it's nice. I don't know that it's a reason to run out and buy one of these, but if you're an artist and you wanna see where you're actually pressing while you're drawing, that makes it nice. I probably won't use it too much. As far as everything else, battery life is the exact same. The displays are the same, the cameras are the same. Hopefully they'll update it with ProRes and everything else seems to be the same. They don't seem to be too different. And if you have last year's model, unless you want the hover feature, I don't know that I'd run out and get one of these. I think they're both amazing devices. The 12.9 inch is my go-to device for everyday use. So this is what I use full time when I'm not creating videos. So this is one of my favorite devices they've ever made. Now they have haven't moved the camera to the top here, probably because the Apple Pencil. Maybe we'll have that in landscape mode in the future, but right now it's still on the side. Maybe we'll get a redesign next year or the year after, but at this point, it's not that compelling of an upgrade from the M1, but it's a huge upgrade if you have any of the older 12.9 inch iPad Pro models. The same is true for the 11 inch, although this mini LED display is a big update. However, it still has the bloom issues if you're using maybe a very dark background. I don't really notice it when I'm using it for HDR content, but I think the M2 will really shine with different video apps and more. If there's anything else you'd like to see with the new iPad Pro models, let me know in the comments below. And of course, I'll link these wallpapers in the description so you can check them out as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.